Hey, I wanted to do a follow-up on the Outbox video. The video has been super popular. I think everybody's pretty excited about the new capabilities of the Outbox. After I shot the video, I mean, it was 25 minutes long. I mean, let's face it. Yeah, a lot of content to cover in there. Uh, hopefully the sample reeled it up. Uh, but since then, I've reworked the configuration API. I made it a little cleaner. And I realized I forgot some of the really cool features about it. So I want to kind of jump in and show kind of how it works. You'll see the new configuration API when I get into it. But first, I want to demo it again, just for those that want to keep up. Again, this is the Outbox sample. It has an API that lets a member submit a registration. And this is an API controller that just writes directly to a database as part of a DB context called Save Changes Async. And as part of that, it also publishes a message. And it's all done through a business component. The logic actually isn't in the controller itself. So I'll jump into that in a second. The first thing I want to do is I want to create a registration. So I have my event 12 here and I have member 12. I already registered that one. I'm going to do member 13 for $100 and I'm going to hit execute. And as we can see, I get a 200 back. I get my registration ID. I have my registration date. I got my member ID, my event. Everything looks good. Now, here's the cool part that perhaps I might have missed out on mentioning. RabbitMQ isn't even running. There, there's no RabbitMQ. This is literally just my API running by itself with a connection to Postgres. And as we can see, if I go to the controller, my registration controller calls this submit registration method, which, as we saw in the previous walkthrough, creates a registration, adds it to the database, calls publish endpoint publish, calls save changes async, and then boom, done. And we could do this all day long. Now I could come up here and say, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put member 14 in here and I could execute that. Boom, 200, everything's working great. And no RabbitMQ, because we're in offline mode. We're, I changed up the bus registration a little bit for this API. And what I did is I add the Entity Framework out box. You'll see this nice clean new syntax. No more of this special registration of all this other jank. It's all cleaned up. I'm telling it I'm using Postgres. I'm disabling the inbox cleanup service because I'm not responsible for, I'm not using that here first of all because I'm only passing APIs, but I don't want it running. And I'm using the bus out box and I've turned off the dis disabled the delivery service. So the service that actually moves messages from the out box to RabbitMQ, not even running. I do tell it I'm using RabbitMQ, but just to make sure everything's on the up and up, I even removed the mass transit hosted service, so I am not even starting the bus. I am not even trying to connect to RabbitMQ. So you're not filling up the error logs, you know, you're not making a mess. There is no RabbitMQ in the picture here. I'm not starting the bus, and boom, I'm publishing all day long through the bus out box. And how do I know that's working? Well, I got data grip here, and I'm gonna select from the registration. I can see that. The two registrations that I put in here are there, 13 and 14. They have the timestamps of, you know, just a moment ago. Uh, and yeah, I paid 100 bucks for them. I also have the messages in the outbox table. And these are the two messages that were created. Uh, you can see the sent time was just a few minutes ago. You can see there's some crazy properties in here, like the RabbitMQ exchange name that it's going to be sent to, because it was a publish. Uh, you can see the outbox ID, which is created for each outbox call. And I can actually see the message body. If I crank down in here, I can see that the event is event 12, the member is 13, registration ID is this. All of that data has been put in that message, and it's going to be ready to be sent. That's pretty cool. I have an offline ability to produce messages to an outbox with no connection to RabbitMQ. Now let's make sure I'm not just, you know, making stuff up. If I go over here to Docker Compose, I can see that the service that normally reads from RabbitMQ is in recovery mode. It's basically saying, hey, I'm not connected to the broker. I'm going to try reconnecting intermittently. All is good there. So let's go ahead and start RabbitMQ and go back here. And we'll see the service kind of kick back up. RabbitMQ is starting up. It's doing its thing. You can see it's starting, creating its thing. It's got some weird error in the log. Don't know what that is. All the plugins are started up. And now we got a whole bunch more messages. What do we have here? Oh, yeah. Serialized access. It should retry. Not a problem. So let's see. We originally had our connection errors. 
Now what do we have? We have, we redeclared all our queues and exchanges. We called receive on notify, notify registration because, hey, look, we actually sent the registration. The outbox was sent, it was delivered. The outbox was sent, it was delivered. So as that service came up, the outbox delivery service, which is actually running in the service now instead of the web API, is pulling those messages out of the outbox, putting them in the key, appropriate exchanges, gets delivered to the queues, all the sagas run, everything is happy. This looks like just a simple concurrency issue with Postgres, it would have retried, so everything should be fine there. Uh, we removed the outbox messages, everything was produced. You can see we get an error there, but if we go down, MT is actually doing a warning for the retry, so it's gonna retry it. It eventually retries it. We get the uh, registration state, the outbox is delivered, message group, remove two expired outbox messages. If we go out here and look, we should be able to see that those are done. If we go to RabbitMQ, we should be able to see that we actually have RabbitMQ up and running now. We can go to our queues, nothing in the error queues because the registration state error that we saw retried and it processed successfully. Um, we didn't get duplicate messages. We only got the actual messages we were supposed to get from the outbox for the different consumers for that saga. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I didn't cover that at all last time on how we could actually deliver messages without being online. Uh, so yeah, surprise. Um, I also want to just, you know, now that RabbitMQ is actually, actually up, if I go and submit a new member, if we go out and look, we'll actually see that it's going to pick that up and process it just as quick as it did before. So, yeah, pretty awesome. So that's offline messaging. That's how the outbox can be used without the broker even being available. But because I'm configuring it for RabbitMQ, it is capturing the broker-specific details. So again, Subtle, but a nice little feature as far as capturing all that data. Um, and I just did that as a, as a kind of a demonstration to show that you could do that. Don't know that you would, but you could. And that's always a nice thing. Uh, especially if you're doing like a store and forward from like a mobile device where you want to write things to the database and then have another service pick those up off that database and that device and deliver them out to a broker. So I can think of some pretty cool scenarios there as well. Um, and these services like Inbox Cleanup and Delivery Service can run anywhere because they're just looking at the same table. Um, yeah, if I, I shouldn't have any records in here. So if I go into Outbox State and look at that, yeah, it should be empty because all the outboxes are delivered. And actually, if I look at Inbox State, that should be empty too because the Inbox uh, table is currently clearing itself. So let me go ahead and put another one in here so I would have an inbox for that state machine. And then if I go back in here, I would actually see there's an inbox state. And I can see that it was received at this certain timestamp. It was actually consumed, which is the timestamp of when the saga completed that was handling that inbox. And then the timestamp of when the messages were actually fully delivered to the broker and the last sequence number that was delivered to the broker out of the outbox. Because again, they're delivered in order and incrementally based on that delivery count. So pretty cool stuff. I, I'll brief briefly touch on the API. Like I said, I've cleaned it up. I've got this add entity, en entity framework outbox. It's very specific to that. It has the DB context. I didn't change a whole lot here, I don't think. I think I just, I still have the extension methods for adding the entity to your um, DB context. Uh, yeah, nothing crazy there. There I'm mapping the actual registration, which is stored by the API controller. And the registration state map is just the standard Saga class map for the current state, things like that. Um, yeah, the service itself has its own registration. Here you can see I'm doing the same thing, Entity Framework Outbox. I have the query delay. I'm telling it to use Postgres, which is just a shortcut for setting that lock provider. Uh, I set the duplicate detection window. I didn't talk about this last time, but this is basically specifying a window for how long a message should stay in the inbox so that it doesn't run the consumer again or produce events again. And you can set this to any value. I think the default is 30 minutes, but for the demo, I made it really short. Uh, and again, I set up the bus outbox here because I want this to deliver since I took it out of the API. So, yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, just a quick kind of follow-up reaction to that. 
Appreciate any and all feedback. Definitely download the test nougats. See how this works for you because I'm sure there's use cases I haven't covered. It's brand new code. It's, it's definitely what I would call in the early, early access phase. Um, but again, I, I've run through and tested it pretty well. It works pretty well. I'm curious to see what your experiences are with it. Yeah, there's, there's surely something I've missed, but uh, yeah, pretty awesome. So cleaned up API, latest nougats have all the code. And the sample is updated as well to use those newer APIs. So anyway, that's a follow-up, something I completely forgot from last time. And uh, thanks for tuning back in. We'll catch you again.